Tutorial 12, The Review Assignment. I'll be going through steps 1 through 4. In step 1, we're asked to open a file called STORM, and then to do a Save As and to call the file STORM Report. I've already done that. Next, we're asked to enter our name and the date in the documentation sheet, and then we move to step 2. In step 2, we're going to use the Macro Recorder to record a macro, which will simply access the yearly chart sheet. So essentially that's all it will do. Let's go back to the documentation sheet and let's record our macro. From the Developer tab, we have the Record Macro button. I'll go ahead and select that. I will name my macro Chart. You can't use spaces in a macro name, so I've used an underscore. And then we'll give it a brief description. When we finish with that, we'll click OK to start the recorder. Now again, this is so easy, we're just going to click on the yearly chart sheet, and that's it. So we will stop the recording. Let's go back to the documentation sheet and see if it works. From the Developer tab, we can click on Macros. There's our yearly chart sheet, and let's click Run to run it. OK, looks like it's working fine. So let's go back to the documentation sheet and move on to Step 3. In Step 3, we're asked to open the Visual Basic Editor. You do that by either pressing Alt F11, the shortcut key, or you can use this button, the Visual Basic command. That pops you into a window that looks, frankly, like a completely different program, and that's pretty much what it is. This is the Visual Basic Editor, and it uses a programming language called VBA. There are two windows that are probably open. If they're not open for you, you can click View and choose Project Explorer. That opens this top window. And Properties window opens this one. So mine are already open. And what we're looking at here in the Project window is really our file in a tree structured directory. So our file is a project, and it has various sheets. and in the Modules folder, this is where your macros are kept. Now anything that you click or select in the Project window will have its properties appear in the Properties window. So one of the things that we were asked to do in Step 2 was to rename this VBA project. So if we click, notice that its name property is open in the Property window, and then we can modify that. We'll call it Storm Report Project. The other thing that we want to look at is this module. Now this may not be open for you. If the folder is closed, you can click on the plus, and that, module 1, is where our macros are contained. In fact, if I double click it, it will open a code window here so that you can see the macro code. But we've been asked to change the name of this module 1 and to call it Storm Report Module. So I'll click on it to make it active. Its name property appears below, and then we'll modify it. Let's take a look at the macro. A macro begins with the, a command sub, which stands for sub procedure, and it ends with an in sub. In between we have remarks. Notice that these are in green text and they have an apostrophe to the left. This is just information about our macro. It doesn't, these lines don't actually matter. We could take them out. Now the lines that are in the black type that's the actual VBA commands that are making us or allowing us to select the yearly chart sheet. You can run a macro if your cursor is in the macro by pressing F5. The F5 function key runs the macro. Now, you may not think that it worked, but if I toggle out of the VBA window with Alt F11, you'll notice that we're looking at the yearly chart sheet, so it did work. I'll toggle back with Alt F11. So now that we see how a macro is recorded, what we can do is we can highlight this one and use Control C to copy it, position our cursor a little bit lower, and do a Control V to paste it. Now I want the macro to look for another sheet. I'd like it to look for the statistics sheet, and I can see that sheet over here. So I want to take out yearly chart, and replace it with statistics. I'll just erase the documentation rather than bothering to fix it. And then we're going to substitute 
statistics for yearly chart. And let's see if this macro runs. We'll place our cursor in the macro. We'll press F5. Okay, again, we'll toggle out with Alt F11 and look at the sheet. We're on the statistic sheet. So let me toggle back in. Let me show you another way that you could create a macro. You could go to Insert and choose Procedure. This is how we would create a macro in the VBA editor. Let's name this macro Report. It is a sub-procedure, which is a macro, and we will leave it the scope of it public so that it will be available to us. We'll click OK, and so it's gone ahead and given us the sub-command. It inserted the word public because we had chosen public in the previous dialog box. And then the in sub, and it places the cursor in between. We can start by typing an apostrophe and then some text. This macro accesses the report sheet, and let's just highlight this line, copy, and paste it. I'll paste it right below the remark, and then I just need to change the word statistics to report. In addition to the macros that we've just created, you'll need to go back to the textbook and make sure that you have a macro that accesses all of the sheets in the file. I'll show you what that would look like. So there'll be the yearly chart macro, the decades chart, the comparison chart, the stat sheet, and the report sheet. One thing that is different, they did add another line of code in the report sheet. This would allow the computer to select cell C6. So you can pause the video so that you can check and make sure you have all of these macros and then also that all of them are working. In the next video, we'll show you how to assign these macros to the buttons in the file.